Happy moment in South Carolina. We have a lot of happy moments. We have a lot of challenges, but we got great people and we are determined and organized and we'll get through things like floods and hurricanes. But there's some other things that, that hold us back. And one that's traditionally held people back all over the country is dyslexia. Well, South Carolina has taken the lead to do something about that. And I'm just delighted to be here for this bill signing. And this is what this does. This bill is important because it requires the Department of Education to develop a universal screening process to identify students who may be at risk for problems in reading, math, writing, and social, emotional development. It establishes a multi-tiered support system for you to provide data analysis to match instructional resources with the educational needs of the individual children. In learning disorders task force will work with the Department of Education to assess similar issues in the future. This isn't the only recent victory and success that we've had in South Carolina in this fight against dyslexia. A new charter school, known as the Lakes and Bridges Charter School in Easley, is the first free school for children with dyslexia in the state of South Carolina, and it's the fifth in the country. So once again, we're working with him. He was the primary sponsor of this bill and it's been a long time coming but it's here now and this bill will help us determine which children have dyslexia and there, there are a lot of us that have a little bit of it and we didn't know what it was. I get my B's and D's mixed up all the time and I've just been informed that that is dyslexia and I, I'm a uh, there's a great South Carolinian who right now is in Spain practicing up for the Olympics, and that's Asia Wilson, and she's about as successful as any person can be in the, in the, in the walk that she is doing across this earth. And there's her daddy, Roscoe, right there. And she told him, <laughs> she, told, she told Mr. Wilson to be sure to be here. So somebody take a picture of him. He's the tall one over there and <laughs> send it to Asia. So let me call on some people. I'd like to start with Gary Clary, who is the primary sponsor. Gary, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Governor. Uh, this is a, a tremendously happy day uh, for a lot of us up here. When I look around and see my my co-sponsors that are here with me, and I see uh, all the distinguished people that are here from uh, various parts of government. But most importantly, when I look around and see these families that have these children who have suffered from dyslexia and had no alternatives. You know, the whole purpose in this bill was brought to my attention shortly after I came to the legislature four years ago. I had a young constituent who was here advocating for the Exceptional Child Scholarship Fund. That scholarship allowed a dyslexic student to go to a private school in order to receive the proper instruction. That just seemed absolutely wrong to me. Fast forward a couple of years and a group from up in our neck of the woods, up in Clemson, came to me with the idea that they wanted to form a public charter school for dyslexics, but they needed to amend the, the charter school law so that they could make it uh, disability specific. Senator Thomas Alexander and I worked on that, and at the last hour of the last day of session a couple years ago, we passed that bill. That enabled lakes and bridges to become a reality, and as the governor says, it is going to be a model for South Carolina. But most importantly, this legislation that we have here today is going to change things in our public schools in South Carolina that aren't like lakes and bridges. It's going to have universal screening. There's going to be 
intervention and instruction that's going to be pushed down from the State Department of Education. We've got a group here from the State Department, and the first thing I need to do is thank Superintendent Molly Spearman. We went round and round for, for a couple of years on this bill, and last February, Superintendent Spearman called me and asked if she could meet me here on the floor of the House. It was at that time she said, we figured out a way we can do this. And because the whole issue in doing anything here in this building is how much does it cost? And the State Department of Education figured out a way that it could be paid for without any impact on the general fund. So with that, uh, I then discovered that I had two grandsons that were dyslexic. And that made it really hit close to home. But with all of that being said, this bill is going to do things that uh, we really have no idea how good it's going to be. When we have trouble with children reading at grade level when they get to the third grade, there are reasons for that. And I think one big reason is dyslexia. You know, dyslexia has a saying, one in five. One in five children suffers from dyslexia. That's 20% of our population. And as a result of that, we've got big issues. You know, I was a circuit judge, as, as my friend the governor knows. He spent his life as a lawyer, as a U.S. attorney for South Carolina, as the attorney general when I was a circuit judge. And when I would finish with a trial or accept a guilty plea, there are questions that I ask each and every defendant. And one of them was, how far did you go in school? And it was almost universal that they quit school. They would go to the eighth or ninth or 10th grade and they would quit. It never occurred to me then, are these folks dyslexic? And Governor, what I want us to do is to work with the Department of Corrections and see if we can't screen every prisoner in South Carolina for dyslexia. Because 85% of them are going to be coming out. They're going to be released and we want them to be able to be productive citizens in our state. We passed legislation this year that helps that and as a result of that we need to be screening all these folks that are in prison. You know, there are so many people that I want to thank because this has been a, a very long road. You know, my co-sponsors, when I look around here, Chairman of the House Education Committee, Rita Allison. She believed from day one in this, in this bill. And then I look at Ray Felder, Chairman of the Subcommittee for K through 12. Then my co-sponsors, Jerry Govan, Bill Taylor, Neil Collins, Patsy Knight's back there. I hope I'm not missing someone else. There are others who are not here with us. And then I've got to thank the guy who really kept things going for me, Pierce McNair, Research Director on House Education. <laughs> Sally Cawthon from Senate Education. Yeah. Emily Heatwall from, from the State Department. John Payne, Becky Davis, we've got David Mathis here. And then, you know, I've, I've got to thank the senators that were involved because we hit a roadblock over in the Senate. Uh, a senator didn't want an unfunded mandate and we figured out a way to get around that. And I've got to thank Senator Greg Hembry, uh, Senator Harvey Peter on, on the chairman of the Education Committee over there, uh, Senator Vincent Shaheen, and Senator Shane Martin because all of these people made it work and then Representative Robert Brown was on the conference committee with, with Representative Felder and me. Um, and then when we were pushing this bill through, two groups that really got behind us, uh, well three groups, decoding dyslexia and I'll talk about that in a minute, but South Carolina Optometric Physicians Association, I think we've got three people here, uh, Michael Zolman, Katie Davis and John De Jondra McNeely uh, that are present, and then from the South Carolina Speech Language Association, uh, Danielle Varnado, Crystal Murphy Holden, uh, Crystal Werfel, uh, Suzanne Adloff, and Leslie Wade Woolley. They, they delivered the real scientific testimony and had the data to back it up that went a long way to bolster 
this legislation. And then I see my friend Maggie Cash over here from the Children's Hospital uh, down at MUSC because she was, has always been a go-to person for me and, and she has a real personal interest in this uh, because of her son whom I met today and uh, you just never know who's dyslexic. So, you know, once again, we're, we, haven't, we haven't finished yet. You know, we've got a long way to go in trying to address the needs in South Carolina in, in education. And I want us to make sure that, that we do that. Uh, the governor did a great job in talking about how this legislation is going to help South Carolina. And, but it takes all of us to continue to support public education in this state. So with that, it's my great pleasure to introduce a huge partner in this. You see a lot of red shirts and green shirts around here today. But the Decoding Dyslexia of South Carolina, uh, Karen Smith uh, is the leader of that group, and, and I've known uh, Karen's family for a long time. Her husband, uh, Billy McBee Smith, has been a friend of mine. He practiced law up in Spartanburg. He uh, practiced law with him, uh, had cases with him, and then as a circuit judge, tried a number of cases with him. And uh, Karen, thank you very much for being here, and let's hear from you. Thank you, uh, Representative Clary. Um, as he said, um, I'm um, one of the state leaders for Decoding Dyslexia South Carolina. Jessica Albrecht here. She, um, and she and I have led a grassroots movement in the state of South Carolina, and um, we've gained momentum and full support of this bill, and we are so proud and so happy that South Carolina can be a state that does something that's good for the children that are in the school structure struggling with dyslexia. So um, we, I'd like to, everyone to know that um, we, have, we are a movement that have, has organized on Facebook. And if you want to know more about decoding dyslexia, you go to Facebook, decoding dyslexia, and um, you'll, South Carolina, and you will find out how to get the resources. We're parents helping parents. And uh, it's a good organization. And we thank everyone so much for what they've done. Jessica, did you want to say a few things? Well, we just wanted to thank the governor and Representative Clary on behalf of all the families in our state and their children who deal with dyslexia. It's hard for me to say the word suffer because the only reason why dyslexics suffer is because of the ignorance that surrounds dyslexia. And that these children, these students, these people who have dyslexia are successful, they're smart, they're brilliant. But because of the way they're being taught to read in our public schools, they aren't able to reach their full potential. And so that's what this bill does. It starts getting the ball rolling. And like Representative Clary said, there's a lot more work to do, but this is a huge step. And we are so grateful for this support. And we're excited to continue to support whatever dyslexia um, movement keeps on going. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Now we'll sign the bill. Everybody ready? Oh, gosh. 